if you think that they're gonna get me to sell my cryptocurrency before the Bitcoin halving, you must be crazy. No, I am not selling $1 worth of cryptocurrency. On the contrary, I'm positioning myself to buy even more altcoins. I've been researching altcoins, diving deep, going altcoin hunting, because I believe we are gonna move into the biggest cryptocurrency super cycle we've ever experienced. And this is based off of data. Data. Let me say it. Say it with me. Say it with me. Data, not emotions. Let me say it again. Not an emotional investment decision. This is based off of data, undeniable data. And by the way, proprietary data that you will never find anywhere else on the internet because it's something I developed. It's not something where I went on Twitter. I took somebody else's information and then put it on my YouTube channel. This is data that I created from scratch myself that will give you undeniable proof. You might not be able to accept it, but you can't disprove it. In this video, I'm gonna dive into a Bitcoin price prediction and I'm gonna be showing you exactly why I am not selling $1 worth of crypto. On the contrary, I'm buying as much as I possibly can. Keep watching. So here's the story. I'm scrolling through social media, I'm scrolling through YouTube specifically, and I see the same title over and over again. People are like, I'm gonna sell all of my cryptocurrency. I'm selling everything before the Bitcoin halving. A lot of people claiming that they're gonna sell their cryptocurrency, and I see them even going viral. And I start watching the videos because I'm curious. I wanna know, right? Is there something wrong with what I'm doing? I wanna take profits too. If it's smart to take profits, I wanna know. Like, of course. So I start going through their videos and I see a common theme. This is the common theme. People are investing based off of emotions. I don't see that much data and conviction. I see a whole bunch of people making random guesses. And this is what I do not do. I used to do that. I used to be that way. And I know a lot of people have felt the pain from last cycle of not taking profits. Here's a bigger one. Their audience not taking profits and then they basically crucify the person that's running the YouTube channel. That's a big one. There's a lot of influencers that need to recover emotionally from the trauma of last cycle because it was pretty bad. And I went through a lot of it as well. So there's this defensive type of, I guess you could say character and pretty much everything I'm seeing. Like, let's take profits because remember, we didn't take profits last time. Not only that, let's take profits because it broke all time high. These are not good reasons to take profit. You have to provide data and information that is undeniable. Here's another big one. This is the biggest deception in my personal opinion. This is my you know, opinion. We all have opinions on the internet, but this is my personal opinion. The biggest deception in crypto is short-term data. Data that is extremely isolated in a closed vacuum, not taking into consideration any other variable, but isolated data, which makes the person look extremely smart, like they know something, but really it's in a closed vacuum. Data that doesn't take the entire picture into consideration. And this is what I wanna provide you today. Today, I'm gonna show you information that takes the whole entire picture into consideration everything into consideration and it's going to be undeniable and if you could disprove it i will pay you a thousand dollars if you could disprove my data i will pay you out of my pocket i'm very serious about what i'm doing because if you if you could disprove it and you're right you're going to save me way more than a thousand dollars so i'll pay anybody all you have to do is tag me on any social media and disprove what I'm saying. But this data is undeniable, guys. When I mean undeniable, I'm betting and doubling down on my decision to buy altcoins. I've been researching altcoins in my group and I'm gonna scoop up these gems. Hey, we might see a small dip. We might see like a little drop. Is it significant enough for me to get rid of my portfolio? You're crazy if you think I'm gonna let go of my altcoins 
before the next Bitcoin halving. So if you appreciate this type of content, do me a favor, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below, share it with a friend that's selling their crypto, share it with them like, hey, Alex said this, you know, this guy was talking about this, da, 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 da. you know, because that's what everybody does on the internet. They share other people's information, but this information is proprietary, meaning I developed it myself. And I believe you're gonna be very interested in what I have to offer. Also, if you guys didn't know, I do a complete training here. It's about an hour and 44 minutes on how I turned $7,000 into millions at the age of 25 years old, how I've been able to find and identify undervalued altcoins predictably. And what I do is I actually give you a checklist that you could do it yourself with. So this checklist has been fine tuned for the past eight years. And all you have to do is follow the steps on the checklist and you can find the same undervalued altcoins that I find, like for example, on the last couple of videos where I'm doing pretty much big numbers. I mean, one of my biggest plays did a 5X in recent history. And yeah, you could do that yourself and learn and get the checklist for free. Click the link in the pinned comment below and you will get the checklist 100% free. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention, listen, take notes, do whatever you have to do. This is gonna be the most important information you probably ever got about the cryptocurrency market and you need to focus and understand what I'm saying. Don't just watch this video for entertainment, but actually understand what I'm about to say. This website is from the Federal Reserve. What we're looking at is the FOMC meeting that's happening March 19th to 20th in the next couple of weeks. This right here is the most significant data that you need to understand the trajectory of the cryptocurrency market. Everything else is short-term noise and emotions. Why? Because for the last two FOMC meetings, they have done nothing with interest rates. Meaning, this is extremely bullish. Why? The only way the market falls is if they decrease interest rates, aka print money. Now, I'm going to explain more on this. But just understand, if you understand this one variable, this one piece of data, it could save you so much time and so much money. And you'll see what I'm saying. I'm going to give you undeniable proof. But this is what I'm waiting for right here. All you have to understand is this. The Federal Reserve controls the world's money. Let me explain why. It's very simple. If I wanted to control the physical nature of reality, the best thing you could possibly use is money. Why? Because money buys pretty much everything. It buys human labor. Let's see, back in the day, they used to enslave us, right? Physically say, hey, you have to build this, right? Now they enslave us with money. They control the mechanism of money. Now there's a couple of variables with money that you have to understand. Number one, USD or the United States dollar is the world reserve currency, meaning all other dollars are divisible by USD. Now, I'm not going to go into the details, but there's something called the Bretton Woods Agreement. And in this agreement, they basically made a deal with the world to say, hey, USD is going to be the world reserve currency because it's backed up by gold. And all of you are going to make your dollars divisible by USD. And then they took away the gold. And that's a big finesse from American history. And we're not going to go too much in detail about that. But from that situation, the world was basically under the control of the United States dollar and they remained in dominance. This is why in every single country you go to, they're gonna always look for USD because nine times out of 10, their country's currency is you know hyperinflated and losing value too fast. USD has the world in dominance. Nobody can deny me on this fact. This is just for the new people that don't understand what's going on in the world. This is a fact. USD controls the foreign exchange markets, and then you have to ask the question, who controls USD? That is the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve controls three mechanisms with USD. They control if it's printed, they control if it's vacuumed out of the system, which is the opposite of printing, or they control if it does nothing. They control ins, outs, and pauses of USD. That's the Federal Reserve. Now, I'm not going to go into the history of it. It's a very sketchy past. And, you know, a lot of people are going to get depressed if they start researching into uh, the creature from Jackal Island and how the Federal Reserve was created and how this is like partially a government entity, but then it's not really. It's private and it's controlled by the most 
powerful people on planet Earth. But long story short, everyone can agree with anyone that understands how the world works. If you want to control the world, you control USD. And the Federal Reserve does that. And they do this by printing, vacuuming money out of the system or taking away money or pausing. And this is done by the interest rates. So you have to understand this before I go into the data. If you don't understand this one fact, it's going to be very difficult for you to really comprehend the chart that I'm about to give you. So it's very simple. When they increase interest rates, they make it more expensive to borrow money. Meaning, if I had a friend that wanted to loan out $1,000 for 10% interest versus another friend that wants to loan out the same $1,000 for 1% interest, who are you going to go with? You're going to go with the guy with 1% interest because it's cheaper to borrow money. It's the same thing with the Federal Reserve. When they want people taking out loans, they lower the interest rates. This is how they print. There's no physical printing going on. They just lower the interest rates. Now, when they want people to not take out loans, they increase interest rates. Hopefully that makes sense. So with those two mechanisms, they control the printing or the vacuuming of money in the US dollar, which therefore trickles down into other countries' dollar and affects that, which trickles down into risk on assets like stocks and Bitcoin and affects that, which trickles down into commodities, trickles down into pretty much every industry on planet Earth because at the tippy top is the United States dollar. It's the world reserve currency. It's the world reserve currency. Everything is affected by this one variable, everything. The price of houses, the price of land, Everything is affected by this. So if we can watch the move of the Federal Reserve, then we will definitely have our answer on what's going to go on with Bitcoin's price. And watch this. Now, here's a concept you have to understand. It's called the risk on assets. So there's two different categories for assets. There's risk on and risk off. So what I really care about is risk on assets. Why? Because Bitcoin is considered a risk on assets, right? So if we look at how the Federal Reserve affects risk on assets, we will have our answer. So what we're looking at here is Bitcoin's price in comparison to all of the Federal Reserve's decisions. I color coded it. Now write this down if you have to. It's very simple. The reds or the light reds, the pinks, right? Those are when they print money or they decrease interest rates. Remember, if they decrease the cost it is to borrow money, then more people are likely to borrow money and that's how they print. So the reds are when they decrease the interest rates. Now, the darker the red gets, the more aggressive they're decreasing the interest rates. The greens are when they increase interest rates or they make it more expensive to borrow money, right? And the whites are basically when they do nothing and interest rates are at zero to 0.25. So it's basically the lowest you could possibly go with interest rates is the whites. And then the yellows is when they do nothing. So for example, this is at zero to 0.25, then it increased interest rates, and then they left the interest rates there, then they increased interest rates, left it there, increased interest rates, did nothing, increased, did nothing. So let's say hypothetically, this is not exactly the numbers. Let's say this is you know uh, increasing interest rates from four to five, this green. So then they would keep it at five right here. Wherever the interest rate was at, they would keep it, right? So as you can see in this period, there's a lot of increasing interest rates and pausing. Now I can go into Bitcoin and we will go into Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin's price, by the way. But what I really rather do is go into a more historical risk on chart. Why? Because this only goes back to 2010. So as you can see, there's only been one time in this time period when Bitcoin has been alive, where printing has affected its price. And as you can see, it affected its price negative. And you could even see as an indicator right here, they started printing. And a couple of months later, we see the price of Bitcoin falling. So this was like a sign. So long story short, when they print money, the market falls or in the Bitcoin having middle, which is right here, Bitcoin having, Bitcoin having middle. And we'll go into more details. I want to go into more details, but first I want to prove this theory. So the reason why I'm looking at this chart is because it's a longer chart from 2000 and this is the S&P 500. So this is the top 500 stocks all in one chart right here, S&P 500 index. You should look it up if you don't understand what I'm talking about, but this is a representation 
of the entire stock market's price, which is the most closely related risk on asset to Bitcoin. It's like its cousin. It's like, this is like almost identical to Bitcoin's price. I mean, you could look at it. If we look at it closely, you can see the big fall here. Look, the, uh, November, December, the big fall. If you come to Bitcoin, you see right here, November, December, the big fall, right? And vice versa. We see it pumping. We see it pumping. You get the point. They're very, very closely related. They're both risk on assets and they both get affected by the Federal Reserve pretty much in the exact same way. And I can prove it to you. Now, if there's one thing you notice in this chart, which is pretty straightforward, you notice that when we see the interest rates being decreased or the money being printed, we typically see a major fall. Let me say it again. Let me just say it straightforward. We see the market falling when they print money. When they print money, the market falls. Not based off of emotion, not because we hit all time high. It's simply put, if you followed this indicator, you would have been good since the year 2000. For 24 years, you would have been like a perfect trader if you followed this indicator. Let's follow it. Boom, 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 price goes up. Oh, it's falling. It hasn't hit my indicator. Oh, look, they start printing money. I'm gonna sell. This wasn't perfect. You would be down a little bit right here, but it was pretty on point and you would have saved yourself from this massive catastrophic fall. Remember, we're looking at risk on assets. So this is the same thing with Bitcoin and you'll see what I'm saying. Again, let's follow this indicator. This indicator was at the exact top. They started printing money. Boom. Market falls. Let's look in recent history. Again, we have another perfect situation. They start printing big falls. Now, don't get me wrong. There's these small falls, right? Like these things like that. But what's more predictable and what's bigger falls? This shows the big falls. This shows the big catastrophic ones. See, you have to ask yourself a question. Do you have risk management in play? Because I haven't bought with all of my capital. I have so much capital left. I've been using risk management. So if the market goes south, it's actually a good thing for my strategy. If the market goes down, I'm buying because I have so much capital on the side to deploy. See, if you have everything in the market, then you've done it wrong since the beginning. But I'm not going to play this little penny game. This is pennies. This is pennies. These little falls are pen that's pennies. It's baby play. That's baby stuff. Right? Have you ever seen a short-term trader billionaire? No. You never see short-term trading billionaires. You always see the Warren Buffetts and the big dogs playing on the long game. So I'm worried about, the only thing I, I care about is these big falls. That's all I care about. And you can see they're clearly outlined with the printing of money. So when this meeting happens, March 19th to 20th, if they print money, I'm selling everything. When they print money, I'm selling everything, but they're not. It's very obvious that they're going to do nothing March 19th to 20th. And you guys can look it up for yourself. During that date, you can watch the FOMC meeting in real time. When, if they print money in this meeting, I'm selling. I'm selling everything. Now, that's the first reason to sell. Not based off of emotions. I got I to gotta say it again because <laughs> people are not really giving data. They're giving isolated data like on-chain metrics for Bitcoin and things of that nature. That's all manipulative and it's very small in comparison to the overall scheme of how much money is in all of these economies, right? Like I'm looking at world economies right now. People are looking at isolated metrics on the Bitcoin blockchain. Like, come on, bro. That's baby stuff. That's baby stuff. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So again, this played out almost perfectly right here. We have this big situation. They printed money. The market fell. You would have called it right here. If you got out right here, you'd have been good money. You'd have been really good money. So the game is when they print money, you sell and then you buy a couple months later. If you would have followed that strategy here, you'd have been really rock solid. You sell, buy back. Sell, buy back. Sell, buy back. You'd have been straight. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sell, buy back. Now, there's a second situation when the market falls. Because people, I saw some people making videos and it's actually ridiculous. They're like, there's always a dump during the Bitcoin halving. Really, bro? This was not associated to Bitcoin. This was a black swan event. This was COVID. That was a COVID dump. So you couldn't have called that no matter which way you, you, you put it. This was a baby dump. 26% is a baby dump. That's a baby dump. No, it does not dump every Bitcoin having. I don't consider that a dump. That's a baby. That's a baby move. And I, I'm, I would argue and say that it's going to be opposite this time with the, you know, with the Bitcoin ETF. There's going to be too much buy pressure. 20% is a baby dump. That's a baby dump. 
Look at how much the price of Bitcoin increased. 20%. People are playing for 20, 30% when you have thousands of percentages of increases. It's so backwards. You're putting yourself in a bad, very bad situation. So let's talk about the second scenario when Bitcoin dumps. The second scenario when Bitcoin dumps is halfway, about halfway through the cycle. So Bitcoin having, we have 371 days and then we see a top. Bitcoin having, we have 518 days and then we see a top. Bitcoin having, we have 560 days and then we see a top. So maybe we have a 10% drop, 20% drop max. I don't even think 20%. But we're talking about way over here, guys. We're talking about like 400 days. So we're talking about August 2025. That's when I sell. I'm not worried about this baby game. It's a baby game. Let's focus on things like getting more capital in the market, right? So what's the, what's the, what's the play here? You really want to play that mind game and sell here to buy back at a 20% discount when you could go work harder and get more cash flow, when you could develop a mechanism. This is why I always talk about the 360 perspective in crypto. I talk about the 360 perspective of you getting cash flow plus investing because it keeps you away from these emotional decisions. Let's talk about taxes. Let's talk about, right? There's so many variables to you selling and trying to buy back. It's a fool's game. It's a fool's game. I will not play that game. There has never been a short-term billionaire. They don't play that game for a reason. It's baby stuff. This is baby stuff. You guys should know this by now. There's some people that have been with me for a while you should know that's baby stuff. It's baby stuff, man. I'm just being honest. So long story short, it's very simple. I'm not selling until halfway through the next bull cycle, about three to 400 days, I'll start thinking about selling my cryptocurrency. I'm gonna do something called the reverse Martingale strategy to get out of the market. I'm never gonna you know, sell to buy back in lower. What I'd rather do is build more capital to buy when it drops. So I have something called a Martingale strategy. I don't dollar cost average. That is also deception. I'm not going to go into it too much because I already went into it in my group. You guys could click the link in the pinned comment below. Dollar cost average is deception. What I would do is double it every single time. This is what the Martingale strategy does. So when the market does go back up, you make much, much more than breaking even. That's what dollar cost averaging does. You only break even. When, when the market goes back up. So if you're just ran, randomly buying, as the market falls, you're randomly buying with random dollar amounts with no strategy involved, then yes, you would just break even when the market goes back up. Not with the Martingale. The Martingale is much more lucrative. So for me, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, great. This is a great time. With all the capital I have on the side waiting to be deployed in the market, I'm gonna do my research while everybody's dumping and does a little 10% dump, whip de doo and I'm gonna deploy capital into the market and get on those altcoins that everybody wanted when they were super expensive, when they were popping off 400%, you, you wanna buy it when they're up 400%, but you don't wanna buy it when it's cheap and the market's falling, right? Like, let's, let's, let's flip the script a little bit. Let's get out of our motions, get out of the mainstream, get out of the mainstream narratives. They're not doing you any good. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. This is what I think the cryptocurrency market's gonna do. You can believe it, you don't have to, We'll see what goes on. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Also, by the way, my Instagram is where I drop pretty much majority of my content first. So follow me on Instagram, Alexander on Crypto. I'll see you guys there. Peace out.